In the late 1980s and early 1990s, the United States stood on the threshold of a new era in aerial warfare. The Cold War was still shaping military strategy, and American planners anticipated that the next generation of air combat would require fighters capable of achieving absolute dominance in the skies against any adversary. Out of this vision was born the Advanced Tactical Fighter, or ATF program. It was meant to develop a revolutionary stealth fighter that could replace the F-15 Eagle, maintain air superiority for decades to come, and deter even the most sophisticated Soviet threats. Two aircraft emerged from this competition, the Lockheed YF-22 and the Northrop YF-23. While history chose the YF-22, which evolved into the legendary F-22 Raptor, the YF-23, nicknamed the Black Widow II, remains one of the most intriguing what-ifs in aviation history. The YF-23 was not just a competitor, it was, in many respects, an even more radical vision of what a fifth-generation fighter could be. Designed by Northrop and McDonnell Douglas, the aircraft combined futuristic stealth shaping with cutting-edge aerodynamics, resulting in a jet that many experts still argue was superior to the YF-22 in several key areas. It was sleek, almost alien in appearance with a diamond-shaped wing platform, long fuselage, and widely spaced engine nacelles that blended smoothly into the airframe. If the F-22 looked like an evolution of existing fighter design, the YF-23 looked like a leap into the future. Its appearance alone earned it nicknames like the Panther, and later, in homage to Northrop's legendary World War II night fighter, the Black Widow II. From a performance standpoint, the YF-23 was designed to emphasize stealth and speed, its radar cross-section was extraordinarily low, thanks to carefully crafted angles, minimal right angles, and even the use of specialized engine exhaust troughs to reduce infrared signature. Unlike the YF-22, which used thrust vectoring nozzles to maximize agility, the YF-23 opted for a stealthier, flat exhaust system. This design made it less maneuverable in a dogfight, but allowed it to remain virtually invisible on radar while cruising at supersonic speeds. In fact, the YF-23 demonstrated the ability to achieve and sustain supercruise without afterburners, a capability that was revolutionary at the time and a key requirement of the ATF program. The YF-23 came in two prototypes. One was powered by Pratt & Whitney YF-119 engines, the same engines later used in the F-22. The other used General Electric's YF-120 engines which were more experimental and incorporated variable cycle technology for greater efficiency. Both versions exceeded performance expectations. The Black Widow was faster than the YF-22, with some sources suggesting it could cruise at Mach 1.6 without afterburner and reach Mach 2.2 at top speed. Its range was also superior, meaning it could cover more ground and loiter longer over a battlefield without refueling. In a head-to-head -head comparison, the YF-23 appeared to offer unmatched stealth and speed, two of the most coveted traits in modern aerial warfare. Yet the YF-23 had its drawbacks, and these would ultimately determine its fate. While stealth and speed were its greatest strengths, agility was not. The YF-22, with its thrust vectoring nozzles, could execute extreme maneuvers, giving it an edge in close-range dogfighting. The Pentagon's requirements for the ATF included not just stealth and supercruise, but also exceptional maneuverability. Northrop's team argued that with stealth and speed, dogfighting would be less relevant. After all, if your aircraft cannot be seen, you don't need to turn tightly in combat. But the US Air Force was not willing to take that gamble. They wanted a plane that could dominate in every scenario, beyond visual range missile duels, radar evading penetration missions, and close-in dogfights. On this last point, the YF-22 seemed to have the edge. Another factor was trust and reputation. Northrop had previously developed the B-2 Spirit stealth bomber, a masterpiece of technology, but one plagued by delays and massive cost overruns. The Air Force was cautious about awarding another monumental contract to a company with a record of budget troubles. Lockheed, on the other hand, had built strong ties with the Air Force through decades of producing the F-104, the C-130, and the F-117 Nighthawk, the world's first operational stealth aircraft. When decision-makers weighed performance, cost, risk, and industrial relationships, the Lockheed YF-22 looked like the safer bet. 
even if many engineers quietly believed the YF-23 was the more advanced machine. The decision came in 1991, when the US Air Force announced the YF-22 as the winner of the ATF competition. The YF-22 would go on to become the F-22 Raptor, one of the most formidable fighters ever built, while the YF-23 prototypes were retired and sent to museums. For many aviation enthusiasts, this was a bittersweet outcome. The Raptor was and remains an extraordinary aircraft, but the Black Widow II seemed to represent an even more futuristic path, one that was never fully explored. To understand the trade-offs, it is useful to compare the two jets directly. The YF-22 was more agile, with a more traditional but effective design. Its thrust vectoring engines allowed it to outturn almost anything in the sky. This fit the Air Force's doctrine, which still valued dogfighting as a critical skill. The YF-23, in contrast, relied on stealth to avoid detection and speed to disengage from threats. In beyond visual range engagements, where missiles decided the outcome, the YF-23 may well have had the advantage. Its stealth shaping was arguably superior, and its range meant it could operate with fewer tanker support missions, extending its operational flexibility. But in close combat, the Raptor was undeniably better. There is also the matter of industrial capability. Building and sustaining a fighter fleet is not just about the aircraft itself, but about the ecosystem of suppliers, logistics, and long-term upgrades. Lockheed Martin had the backing and infrastructure to produce the F-22 at scale, while Northrop, at that time, lacked comparable depth. The Pentagon likely considered this just as heavily as performance data when making its final choice. Still, the YF-23's legacy is far from forgotten. Many of its design features influenced future projects. Its sleek, blended wing fuselage concept can be seen echoed in concepts for sixth-generation fighters. Its emphasis on stealth and long-range performance anticipated modern debates about the nature of aerial warfare in the age of advanced radars and long-range missiles. Some analysts even argue that the YF-23 was ahead of its time, designed for a style of warfare that only now, in the 21st century, is becoming truly relevant. Could the YF-23 ever see a second life? Officially, no. The prototypes remain museum pieces, and the program was shelved decades ago. But the lessons it offered continue to inspire. In fact, when Japan sought to develop its own stealth fighter in the 2010s, there were rumors that Northrop offered to adapt elements of the YF-23 design. While this never materialized, it shows the enduring fascination with the aircraft. In a sense, the YF-23 was not a failure, but a technology demonstrator that proved what was possible, even if the Air Force was not ready to embrace that vision. The story of the YF-23 also raises broader questions about how militaries choose their weapons. Do they prioritize raw performance, or do they balance performance with industrial politics, cost, and risk management? In this case, the Air Force went with the safer choice, and history has largely validated that decision. The F-22 remains unmatched in many respects and has never been shot down in combat. Yet, it is tempting to wonder how different air combat might look today if the Black Widow II had won. Would we have an even stealthier, faster, longer-ranged fleet of fighters? Or would the lack of maneuverability have proven disastrous in unforeseen combat situations? These are questions that aviation historians continue to debate. Ultimately, the YF-23 Black Widow II represents both ambition and a missed opportunity. It was a plane that dared to leap ahead of its time, embodying the idea that the best way to win a fight is never to be seen at all. It challenged traditional assumptions about what a fighter should be and pushed the boundaries of stealth technology further than any operational aircraft of its era. While it never entered service, it remains one of the most fascinating and mysterious aircraft ever built, a symbol of what might have been if different choices had been made. Today, as nations develop sixth-generation fighters under programs like the U.S. Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD, and Europe's Future Combat Air System FCAS, the echoes of the YF-23 can be felt. These new jets are expected to emphasize stealth, range, and advanced sensors over sheer dogfighting agility, the very philosophy the Black Widow II embodied three decades ago. 
In that sense, the YF-23 may have been not the loser of the ATF competition, but rather its visionary that pointed toward the future of aerial warfare. And so, the YF-23 remains a legend, not because it flew in combat or because it filled the skies of American squadrons, but because it captured the imagination of engineers, pilots, and enthusiasts who saw in it a glimpse of tomorrow's warplane. Sleek, silent, and deadly, the Black Widow II may have lost the battle for the ATF contract, but in many ways it won something far greater. A place in history as the fighter that was too advanced for its own time. What are your thoughts on the YF-23? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get our latest videos straight to your notifications.